Hi, my name is Amy Kennedy and I've been with Dahl for Beatty for 17 and a half years. I'm a senior project manager and graduated from Clemson University. I'm here today to share some Jibcrete lessons learned with you. First and foremost, starting with, during the design and pre-construction process. From a, from a sequencing standpoint, if you're utilizing Jibcrete, it is our recommendation that you apply Jibcrete after drywall. This is for two reasons. During the jib creep process, you're introducing a lot of moisture and humidity into the building. And if you, if you do pour the jib creep first, you need to account for a flat strap or a deep legged bottom track to ensure proper drywall attachment. Note this detail needs to be understood early on in the process with the architect as it may or may not affect uh, sound attenuation or fire rating of your wall assembly. Many times the architect doesn't account for the jib creep thickness when um, showing their finished floor elevations on the architectural drawings. Make sure you look through this during your design BIM coordination process as this could affect ceiling heights and cause various other problems down the line with uh, placement of louvers, etc. Ventilation is an absolute must for this product. If you have fixed windows, you will absolutely need to leave several of these out depending upon what type of building you have and how large of the building it is. Um, you have to have air movement and proper ventilation. It is also a good idea to buy additional dehumidifiers and fans to increase the air movement throughout this process. Special consideration needs to be paid to the type of flooring that will be installed on top of the Jibcrete. On one of my projects, we had a water-based adhesive um, specified for the carpet. However, after various calcium chloride tests and samples, the bond was not occurring with the carpet adhesive. I think it was relative to the fact of, due to the water transmission through the holocore and the jibcrete, which will ultimately um, carry on through the life cycle of the building. So what we ended up doing is adding an epoxy-based primer. Um, this obviously was a, a tremendous time delay for us and also a cost concern. So from a scoping perspective, make sure you buy, um, you know, additional floor prep if required, etching, sanding, in order to make sure that substrate is acceptable for your final, final finished floor product. The second portion I'd like to talk about are Jibcrete pre-pour checklists. First and foremost, make sure you, your floors are, are acceptable for the substrate to have the Jibcrete applied to it. All elevation concerns need to be rectified prior to placement. One of the key um, concerns we had prior to installing Jibcrete was establishing your finished floor height of your door frames. Again, ask yourself, do you have proper ventilation and air movement? We do not want to create a Petri dish within the building. This is a spe special concern in hot and humid environments, such as Florida. Understanding the required Jibcrete thickness is absolutely critical as well because this may or may not affect the overall, the overall fire rating of your floor. It is also important to, to perform spot checks along the way to make sure your Jibcrete installer is giving you the proper thickness that you bought with your contract. Lastly, Jibcrete quality control. Make sure you understand the cure time that's involved in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. The cure time will be varied based upon the thickness of the material that you're installing, so make sure you take that into account. From a scheduling scam standpoint, I would also recommend at least one week of cure time um, before loading the floors and putting any additional trades on top of the, of the material. If you do have a sound attenuation mat, you will need to make sure you put plywood on top of those areas because heavy loads imposed upon this space will cause cracking. Also make sure that the Jibcrete sub is looking out for any large voids and doing any scraping of air bubbles so you can have a final finished floor that's acceptable to your flooring contractor. That's all I have for now, but if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.